I need to show you something that seems completely backward. Top earning ranchers are mixing their hay in a way that makes zero sense when you first see it, until you watch what happens to cattle weight gain. I'm talking about a mixing method that goes against every traditional feeding practice, but somehow adds an extra 20 to 30 pounds per month per animal. Here's what's wild. When I visited five different successful ranches, all of them were doing this exact same mixing technique, but none of them would talk about it on camera. It took me weeks to figure out why this method works, and when I finally understood the science behind it, everything changed. The secret isn't in the type of hay you're using, it's in the pattern of how you layer and combine it. And what you're about to see will completely change how you approach feeding on your ranch. So here's what's happening. Most ranchers feed hay the way they've always done it, one type at a time, straight from the bale. Maybe you throw out some grass hay in the morning, some alfalfa in the evening, and you call it done. It's simple, it's traditional, and honestly, it makes perfect sense, right? But there's a massive problem hiding in that approach, and it's costing you serious money every single month. When cattle eat one type of hay at a time, their rumen, which is the first stomach chamber, processes that feed in isolation. What happens next is critical. The microbes in the rumen are incredibly specialized. They need different types of fiber, protein, and carbohydrates at the same time to work at peak efficiency. When you feed just grass hay, those microbes are starving for protein. When you feed just alfalfa, they're overloaded with nitrogen and lacking the structural fiber they need to balance everything out. The result? Incomplete digestion, wasted nutrients, and slow, inconsistent weight gain. And the worst part is, almost nobody realizes this is even happening. You're spending money on quality hay, your cattle are eating, but you're only getting maybe 60 to 70% of the potential nutrition out of every bale. The rest is literally passing through your animals and ending up on the ground as waste. Now here's where the mixing method comes in and why it changes everything. The ranchers I studied weren't just throwing different hays together randomly. They were using a very specific layering pattern that maximizes microbial activity in the rumen. And it all starts with understanding the three-phase digestion cycle. Phase one is the rapid fermentation phase. This happens in the first two to four hours after feeding. During this time, the rumen microbes attack the most easily digestible parts of the hay, the sugars, the simple starches, the tender leaf material. If you only feed high quality alfalfa during this phase, you get a protein spike, but no fiber to slow down the fermentation. The rumen gets too acidic, microbes die off, and efficiency crashes. Phase two is the structural breakdown phase. This happens between four and eight hours after feeding. Now the microbes need rougher, tougher fiber to work on, the kind you get from mature grass hay or straw. If this fiber isn't available because you only fed soft leafy hay earlier, the microbes go dormant. Digestion slows down. Your cattle aren't absorbing nutrients, they're just waiting for the next meal. Phase three is the stabilization phase. This is when the rumen needs a balanced mix of everything some protein, some fiber, some energy, to keep the microbial population healthy and ready for the next feeding cycle. And here's the kicker. If you don't set up phases one and two correctly, phase three never happens efficiently. So what are these top ranchers doing differently? They're mixing hay in a three-layer system that mirrors the natural digestion cycle. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do this on your operation, whether you've got 10 head or a thousand. Layer one is your base layer. This is your coarse, mature grass hay or even clean straw. You're putting this down first, not because it's the most nutritious, but because it sets up the rumen for what's coming next. This layer provides the long stem fiber that keeps the rumen mat structured and prevents acidosis. You want about 40% of your total hay volume to come from this layer. Layer two is your protein and energy punch. This is where your alfalfa, clover, or high-quality grass hay comes in. You're layering this directly on top of the base, and here's the key, you're not mixing it in yet. You're creating distinct layers that the cattle will consume in sequence. This layer should make up about 35% of your total volume. Layer three is your transition blend. This is a mix of medium-quality grass hay, 
a little bit of the alfalfa, and sometimes even some chopped hay or hay pellets if you have them. This makes up the final 25%, and it's designed to create a gradual shift in nutrient density as the cattle eat through the pile. Now, you might be thinking, how is this different from just mixing everything together in a TMR mixer? And that's a great question, because this is where most people get confused. A total mixed ration works well for dairies and feedlots, where you're feeding multiple times a day and controlling intake precisely. But for beef cattle on pasture or in dry lot situations where you're feeding once or twice daily, the layered approach gives you something a TMR can't, a time release effect that matches the rumen's natural digestive rhythm. When cattle eat from a layered hay pile, they don't just grab randomly. They eat in a pattern, usually starting from the top and sides, working their way through the layers over several hours. This means they're getting the protein hit first, then the fiber, then the blend, all in a sequence that keeps their rumen microbes active and efficient throughout the entire day. I watched this happen in real time at a ranch in Montana. The owner switched from traditional single bale feeding to this three-layer system, and within 30 days, he measured an average daily gain increase of 0.7 pounds per head. That's an extra 21 pounds per animal per month. On a herd of 200 head, that's over 4,000 pounds of additional beef production monthly, just from changing how the hay was mixed and presented. But here's the mistake I see ranchers make when they try this for the first time. They mix the layers together too much. They use a loader bucket, dump the three types in a pile, and then scoop and toss it until everything is blended. When you do that, you lose the sequential eating pattern. The cattle get a random mix with every bite, and you end up right back where you started – inconsistent rumen nutrition. Instead, you want to create the layers and leave them mostly intact. If you're feeding from a bunk, put your coarse hay down first in an even layer. Then add your alfalfa or high-quality hay in a second distinct layer. Finally, top it with your transition blend. If you're feeding on the ground, the same principle applies. Make a long row, layer it properly, and resist the urge to overmix. Another critical factor is moisture content and leaf retention. When you're handling multiple hay types, you need to pay attention to how much leaf you're losing during the layering process. Alfalfa especially loses a ton of nutritional value when the leaves shatter off. So here's what the successful ranchers do. They place the alfalfa layer in the middle or on top, never on the bottom where it gets crushed and crumbled by the weight of coarser hay above it. Also, timing matters more than you think. If you're in a climate where hay absorbs morning dew or frost, you want to do your layering after things dry out. Wet hay on the outside of the pile with dry hay in the middle creates uneven intake. Cattle will avoid the wet stuff and gorge on the dry, which throws off the whole system. Now let's talk about cost, because I know that's on your mind. Is this method actually affordable for the average producer? The answer is yes, and here's why. You're not buying more expensive hay, you're using what you already have more efficiently. In fact, many ranchers using this system actually reduce their total hay costs because they can incorporate more of their own lower-grade grass hay into the base layer and stretch their expensive alfalfa further by concentrating it in layer 2. One rancher I spoke with in Nebraska calculated that he saved nearly $4,000 over a winter feeding season by reducing his alfalfa purchases by 30%, while still achieving better weight gains than the previous year when he fed straight alfalfa twice daily. The math is simple. Better digestion means more nutrition absorbed per pound of hay fed, which means you need less total hay to achieve the same or better results. And here's something most people never consider. This layering method also reduces waste. When you throw out loose, mixed hay, cattle sort through it, pull out what they like, and trample the rest. But when you present hay in structured layers, they eat more systematically, and waste drops significantly. Some operations reported cutting hay waste from 20% down to under 8% just by improving how they structured the feed pile. So what about different cattle classes? Does this work the same for calves, yearlings, and mature cows? The principle stays the same, but you adjust the ratios. For growing calves and yearlings that need more protein for muscle development, you increase layer 2 to 45% and reduce layer 1 to 30%. For mature cows in mid-gestation that need more fiber and less protein, you flip it, going 50% base layer and reducing the protein layer to 25%.
The key is understanding what your cattle need metabolically at their specific stage and then building your layers to deliver that nutrition in the most digestible sequence possible. This isn't a one-size-fits-all formula. It's a framework you adapt to your herd, your hay quality, and your production goals. One more thing before we wrap up, and this is huge. Hydration plays a role that almost nobody talks about. Cattle eating layered hay drink water differently than cattle eating single-source hay. Because the digestion process is more active and sustained throughout the day, they need consistent access to clean, unfrozen water. I've seen operations nail the hay layering perfectly, but limit water access and the results disappear. Make sure your water systems can handle the increased demand, especially in winter. So let's bring this all together. The reason top earning ranchers mix hay this way isn't because of some secret ingredient or expensive supplement, it's because they understand how the rumen actually works and they're feeding in a way that supports natural, efficient digestion. They're creating a time-release nutrition system using basic hay types, structured layers, and a feeding pattern that keeps microbial populations healthy and active all day long. If you're serious about improving weight gain, reducing feed costs, and getting more value out of every bale you buy or produce, this is the method that's delivering proven results on ranches across the country. It doesn't require special equipment. It doesn't require a degree in animal science. It just requires you to think differently about how you present feed to your cattle. Now here's what I want you to do. Try this on a small group first, maybe 10 or 20 head, and track their weight gain over 30 days compared to your usual feeding method. Measure your hay usage, watch their behavior, and check your waist levels. I'm confident you're going to see a difference that makes you want to roll this out across your entire operation. And listen, we're building something special here at Biggest Bulls and Cow, a community of ranchers who aren't afraid to challenge the old ways, test new methods, and share what actually works in the real world. If this information added value to your operation, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss the next video. Drop a comment below and tell me what feeding method you're currently using and whether you're going to try this layered approach. And if you know another rancher who could benefit from this, share this video with them. We grow stronger when we learn together, and that's what this channel is all about, helping you build a more profitable, more sustainable, more successful cattle operation. Let's keep pushing forward, let's keep learning, and let's keep raising the standard for what's possible in this industry. I'll see you in the next one.